Today you will learn how to become a chart pattern master and everything there is to know about chart pattern trading. So hello, welcome back and this is an exciting video. I've been looking forward to making this for quite a while and today we'll cover the patterns as connectors. What does it mean? Pattern outline, trading into the outline, wave structure, pattern trigger points and pattern examples. So a very busy video. Let's get into this. Pattern as connectors. What does this mean? This is one of the most important concepts that you will understand, hopefully, in this video. And what does it mean? A market, when we take a look at it, it can do three things. It can go up, it can go down and it can go sideways. Obviously, it doesn't always follow the same um, sequence and the, the degree and the size and the, the severity of the different moves can always change. But that's what the market can do. It can go up, it can go down and can go sideways. And those sideways phases, those are usually what we should focus on. Those are the patterns and the patterns, they connect um, different trending phases like here. It connects the downtrend to the uptrend. There's the pattern. And once we know how to read and trade the patterns, we can get into new trends very early. This is the premise of one of my strategies. Um, you look for a trend that is then losing strength. You will see that the market is giving you a pattern at uh, some degree. Um, and then once the pattern is exited, once the pattern is broken, you trade into a new trend. Obviously, the pattern connector could also happen as a connection between two trending phases into the same direction. So we have an pri um, a primary downtrend and then here the pattern in the side and uh, in the middle of the trend connects the downtrend from the, the, the starting downtrend to the trend continuation. So patterns are not only connecting um, different trends, but they also happen between trends. So you have patterns that are reversal patterns and you have patterns that are trend continuation patterns and we will learn to trade both and this is really really important because in the end most traders are actually breakout traders or pattern traders even though they don't know it so at the premise of their system very very often you see that there are patterns that they are trading so it really does pay out to know how to trade patterns the pattern outline so when we take a look at patterns and when we try to find patterns on our charts, there's usually a, a, a outline level, which can be a horizontal level. It could be a support and resistance level or a diagonal trend line. So this is very important because obviously we need to define how a pattern looks like and we need to define it. So we then also can find a perfect entry point for a pattern. So here you can see the market was in an uptrend then the uptrend slowed down. You have a very well-defined support area, which you have never seen previously in the downtrend. Never did the market agree on any certain level. And then suddenly you have a level that the market is keeping, uh, keep coming back to, keep coming back to, keep coming back to. And this is our pattern outline level. So you'll see in a head and shoulders, for example, this is your neckline. In a, in a range market, it is your, just your horizontal channel lines. And it's very, very important that once you start looking at charts and once you, once you start trying to find um, patterns, you always want to look for patterns that are very well defined. You want to look for patterns where the levels are very, very clear. Like in this example, you have a very well defined support level to the downside and one to the upside. So very, very well defined. There is no, no guessing. There's no doubting of a, of a pattern. Whenever you feel yourself that you are not sure if this is a really good pattern or is it not, the level doesn't line up perfectly and I'm not too sure, then skip it. There are plenty of great patterns uh, coming into the markets every day, every week. So there's no need to force a trade. And you can see this is a continuation pattern, whereas this was a reversal pattern. The continuation, the downtrend, paused temporarily, um, gave you this um, continuation pattern and then it resumed to the downside. And this is a very well defined pattern here as well. Now we have a pattern as a, again a continuation pattern because it happens and exists within a downtrend and the pattern here is defi defined to the top by a horizontal resistance and here to the downside you have a diagonal trend line. So again pattern outlines can come in different shapes and forms. Trading into the outline. How the market moves into the outline, into the, 
into the support, into the resistance or into the trend line can tell us so, so much about where the market is likely going next. I made a separate video about how to predict breakouts. So you can check that out in my channel as well. And this focuses on this concept. So once you have identified that there's a, a trend going on, once you have identified that there is a, a horizontal a pattern outline level, support and resistance, then you start analyzing how does the market actually trade into the level. And this is, I call this a lower bounce in my uh, trading approach. And it basically means that the market is sticking to a level. Whereas previously, you can see every time the market came back to the level, it made quite a, a big move away from the level. So there are a lot of buyers coming in, pushing the price higher, buyers coming in, pushing the price higher. And here, the buyers stayed away from the market. The buyers did not push the price higher. The, bu the buyers did not step in. And now the market is sticking really to the level. What does it show us? It shows us a lack of buying support and that the sellers are more in control now of the market. So if you see that the market is really sticking to a level without being able to, to pull away, um, this should really get your attention because it can foreshadow a, a very strong breakout. And it also happens within uh, trending phases and within tr uh, continuation patterns. So you can see here, the market is in, a down, uh, in an uptrend. And then you have um, in the trend, you have this nice stepping behavior where the market moves higher, establishes a resistance, breaks out, moves higher, establishes a resistance, breaks out, moves higher, and so on. So this is a continuation pattern. And every time you have such a nice um, resistance, you can see in this case, again, you have a lower bounce. The market is sticking to the level. Previously, the market sold off quite a bit from the level, but now the market is really sticking to the level. Here as well, the market has a high point, pulls back, comes back into the level, and is really sticking to the level. It's not able to pull away at all, so there are uh, not a lot of sellers and already here a lot of buyers. So really great confluence and you can see every time the breakout happened, the market pulled away quite a bit. So this is one of my most favorite um, add-on patterns or add-on confluence factors to pattern trading. When we look at patterns, we can look at wave structure as well because it tells us a lot about how the trends are moving. So whereas here in the beginning, you can see the market easily always made higher high and higher high and a higher high and a higher high until it reached this point. Here, first, the market really um, made some rejection candles. So you have a double top and then here you even have a triple top. The market is not able to push higher. What does it tell us? A lack of buying support and the, the sellers come in and push the price down further and quicker and sooner. So the market is not able to push higher. And those are all the little pieces of the puzzle that are coming together here that will help us understand when the market is slowing down. So here we have our double or triple top. The market is not able to push higher. Here before the breakout, what do we have? A lower bounce. You can see here the last time the market was at the level, it pushed higher all the way into the highs. But here the market fails to do that. The market really sticks to the level and uh, then it breaks down. So there are a few things coming together that will help us understand that this is a market that is ready to um, at least first pause and then is completely rolling over. Here as well, first the market made higher highs and higher lows. And then here was the um, a high and then the market failed to make a higher high. Or well, it did make a higher high kind of, but just barely, the market is barely able to push higher. Again, this shows us a lack of buying support and that the market is not really ready to continue the trend, which is an important step if we want to look for trends into the opposite direction. And then you have your, your pattern outline level here is quite nicely defined and you have a very strong breakout point. Here we have a continuation pattern. You can see that the market was in an uptrend, then established here, the market had some issues um, trading higher. It tried to reverse. So actually here the market tried to move lower. So a lot of sellers stepped in, but they were immediately rejected and the market pushed back into the previous highs. And when it pushed back into the previous highs, you can see there's a lower bounce pattern. So the market after rejection here, not a lot of sellers, not enough sellers to start a new downtrend. The buyers are now showing more control and more, um, more power in the market. And then you have a breakout and a continuation. So again, you can put all those little pieces together slowly to form a very sophisticated trading idea. Now we need to take a look at, okay, 
where does the pattern actually trigger? Where do you need to get into a trade? And this is very straightforward. A pattern is triggered when the market closes outside of the pattern. So you really need to wait for a full, complete close outside of the pattern. It's very important that you don't make any decisions mid candle. So as long as the candle is forming, um, you don't get into a trade. You need to wait out until the candle has fully formed and fully closed. You will avoid um, failed and fake breakouts with this approach and you will find high probability breakout scenarios. So, in, and this is very straightforward. It's very simple. It doesn't mean that it's easy, obviously, but it's very simple, a very simple rule. Here as well on the continuation pattern, the, the market is, or the pattern is triggered and you need to get into a trade when the pattern is uh, actually breaking out, when it's fully closing outside of the pattern. So let's take a look at a few examples of regular chart patterns and see how we can apply our knowledge. So this is a head and shoulder, obviously. The market was in an uptrend, uh, making higher highs and higher lows. Here on the left shoulder, the market was already struggling. Here it was not easy for the price um, to make higher highs as easily as before. So this is one piece to the puzzle. Then here the head, yeah, you can say the market did make a higher high, but not really convincing, um, a very weak higher high. So you have a few things. You have a, here you have then, when the market turns around, a very good pattern outline. You have the right shoulder, which is a lower bounce here. So you have a few things that are already coming together, the lower bounce here, the last piece to the puzzle, very important one, because it really shows us that the market is not able to pull away at all. It's not even coming close to the previous high point. So that's a very important point. And then you have your pattern trigger point. This is then a, a reversal pattern. It connects the previous uptrend to the new downtrend. And this is a very important point, actually. If you want to be a trend following trader, um, for me, it never worked to find existing trends and just try to jump on them somehow. I always found myself way too late and I always found myself chasing um, the market. But once I understood that there are those transition or those connecting patterns, um, those then it's when really my trading took off. Once I realized that I need to master the patterns, I can get in very, very early into new trends. I don't need to pick the absolute top or the absolute bottom, but if I find those patterns at the turning points, then I could get really nice um, trades. Here as well, the market was in an uptrend, barely, barely making a higher high here. And after this very weak higher high, the market then started making lower highs. And before the breakout, you have a very nice defined outline level, very good support level for the pattern. And you have a small lower bounce here as well. You have a very strong breakout candle, then you have a pullback and then the new trend starts. So everything is coming together. This is again a reversal pattern. It's connecting the uptrend to the downtrend uptrend, then the uptrend slowly fades momentum, it loses strength. You have the lower highs, which further um, confirm that there is a lo loss of momentum. You have a lower bounce, which is the final piece and a heads up that there might be coming uh, a reversal soon. And then you have the strong breakout. This is, you can call it a flag pattern, whatever you want to call that. This is a continuation pattern between the uptrending leg and the next uptrending continuation. You can see that the market was in a very strong uptrend. Then the market um, tried to sell off. Here the market was not as strong anymore and the market tried to sell off. But obviously compare this uptrending phase to this downtrending phase. The uptrend was much, much, much stronger than this downtrending phase. When you look at the lows, the market is barely, barely able to push into new lows. So this is a very, very important point. Then here, on the third point, you even have a rejection pattern, a very strong candlestick that shows rejection. Afterwards, the market reverses. You have a nice trend line that you can draw, a strong breakout point, and every, everything fits together. Very strong uptrend, very weak downtrend, rejections here at the low, and then the breakout point. So very, very um, great how we can apply our knowledge to that. Here we have a wedge pattern. A wedge pattern is also a reversal pattern. It connects the downtrend to the uptrend. So you have your downtrend, which is very weak at this point. You can see when we look at the lows, the market is barely, barely, barely able to make newer lows, which is a huge sign of weakness. It should get your attention. You have a trend line here as your pattern outline. 
then you have a very strong breakout and then the market doesn't even look back and just starts a new trend. So again, we can put it all together. Weak downtrend, extremely, extremely weak here at the lows. Uh, the market is not able to make lows at all and then a strong breakout after we are able to define the pattern with a very nice uh, level. And this is pretty much how you use patterns. So if we want to sum it up, um, understand that patterns connect trending phases. They can either be reversal patterns, um, which connect a downtrend to an uptrend or an uptrend to a downtrend, or you can have continuation patterns, which exist within a trend, within a primary trend, and then they just connect different um, trending legs and different trending phases. And then we can just put it, you can just put it together, look for only patterns where you can really nicely define the pattern with a horizontal line or with a trend line. Those make for much, much better trading opportunities. Um, of course, sometimes you won't be able to, to find a pattern with a very nice outline, but then you just skip it, you wait for the next one. You don't have to trade, a very, very important point that many amateur traders miss and forget. Don't have to trade, only trade when there are good patterns around. Understand that it's very important to see how the market is trading into the pattern. It can tell you a lot about potential breakouts that are coming up. Look at wave structure. How is the market able to push into new lows? Is it uh, harder for the price to make higher highs um, or higher low or lower lows? What does it tell you about the whole trending structure? And then wait for a confirmed breakout point. And then you can lift your pattern trading game to a completely new level and improve your trading ability uh, significantly, hopefully.